So if you are looking for something fun to do with the kids during the rest of spring break, you could try creating your own butterfly garden. Rich is outside to show us how to do it. Rich. This is going to be something that is a work in progress here, and there's a couple of reasons. There are some things that are a little tougher to come by right now, including that of the butterflies. So we're going to do a two-parter here, not just this will be an ongoing kind of a blog or a vlog. We're not quite sure what it is. Is it video or or the name? I'm kind of going with butterflies and beer. I mean, because let's face it, kick back with your beer and watch your butterflies. That could be a shirt. That could be a bumper sticker. That could be a hobby. Maybe the Audubon Society is watching. Yes, you can use that. Let's talk about some of the things that we'll need. For the monarchs, this is not just a food source for the caterpillars, but it's also a nesting source. So even though that this ogre-ish kind of plant, I'm sorry that I called you that. You're beautiful in your own way here, giant milkweed, because you attract monarchs, and there are other plants that do that. But this one here is a favorite when it comes to the caterpillars. And let me show you the difference here, because we're going to be talking about two types. So, Christina, if you could um, bring up the image of the monarch and the caterpillar that comes from the monarch. And as that picture comes up, one, you'll see that the monarch butterfly is absolutely gorgeous. It's the one that we're very familiar with. It's got all the colors. And the caterpillars, these are the ones that um, I remember as a kid, you know, you put your finger out on the plant and it would crawl up onto your finger and that kind of stuff. And you weren't, they're not like the sticklebacks. They're not like those fuzzy ones that um, could sting or leave a rash. They're really pretty and they're almost like a smooth kind of um, texture to them. But those this is the food source. This is the salad that they'll eat for the beginning of their life and their incubation period. So on this plant here, you would think, all right, well, how many caterpillars could I put? And believe it or not, this one is probably good for three easily, maybe four, but you would have to watch to make sure that there's plenty of leaves for the four of them because they, I'm not going to say that they're, um, buffet hogs, but they are pretty voracious eaters here. So what we're looking for is each one of these stalks to be somewhere along the lines of about 18 to 24 inches. That is what one caterpillar will eat over its growth cycle before it gets to the stage where it gets ready to uh, do the transformation, get a chrysalis and turn into a beautiful butterfly. And so as they do that and they start to turn into the caterpillars, there are other critters, some of them have wings, and they may want to come through and try to pluck off your, um, your pre-butterflies. So with a couple of stakes in the ground, or at least into your soil, and they have a product and it's called bird netting. You find it at the local hardware stores. You just drape it over top so that way there's plenty of room for them to get around the plant, but it will stop some of the winged creatures here from being able to get in and pluck away your caterpillars. So that's for the monarchs. Now those are tough to come by right now. I've got uh, vouchers for those as soon as they're available to get them. So I've been working with this company here. They're Clearwater Butterfly. You can find them online, clearwaterbutterfly.com. And I actually found out about them through wedding sites because they uh, help you raise butterflies to do butterfly releases. But let me show you, and this may be one of the most boring segments on, <laughs> on TV here uh, because they're teeny tiny and caterpillars just don't do all that much. Let me see if I've got one that's a little, e oh, there you go, you can see. So about 10 of them come in each one of these cups and they are very small, at least right now. So these are the painted ladies. So Christina, if you can pop up the painted lady image and these caterpillars, these you might see in your garden. Even, you know, within the next couple of months here, you might see these. They have the spikes on them. They got the little hairs or whatever you want to call it. That doesn't mean that you want to give them, you know, get after them with any kind of bug spray or, um, um, any kind of deterrence. You want to do the same thing and you can also do it with your outside plant. Just get some taller of the stakes and you can still do some of the bird netting. So if you are seeing those caterpillars, that variety, uh, go ahead and leave them because they do turn into beautiful butterflies. And with just a quick search on, on the Google, you can find some of the others. There are other caterpillars. Some of them are like the black wing um, butterfly. It looks more like a moth. It has a slightly different wing structure, but still pretty. And they're pollinators. And that's the important part of all this. We know that the bee population has been definitely decimated over the last several years. The butterfly population has also gone down and it's not just the monarch butterflies, it's all of the species. So these things are as important as bumblebees as doing their same job, going from flower to flower, getting their nectar, and then pollinating the next flower as they do so by getting the pollen on them. So one of the things that we're gonna be doing and we're going to do this very simple container style. We're not digging into the ground and turning into a big garden here. So what we'll do is with soil, we'll get this one here going. And since now we're going to have to kind of branch out with some of the other flowers, we're going to get other of the varieties that butterflies are attracted to. And our hopes here 
are that with this, that we start to attract some of the monarchs and that they will come in by themselves and then lay the eggs here on the backside of the leaf. And then as we do get the monarchs and we start to get some of their larvae and caterpillars, then we can put them onto these plants and allow them to start to grow. A quick search. Oh, that was it? That was four fun-filled minutes? All right, well, I think that we got at least the idea for the blog name. We will have this at News for Jack. You'll also be able to find it on our Plus station. And the cool part is, Jesse, turn around. Um, that camera right there, that uh, odd-looking little uh, thing that sticks off the wall, that is a little webcam. So that is going to go into our webcam network. You'll be able to go to that at News for Jacks and we'll have it pointed over here so that on those times when you're bored or maybe you don't have any butterflies in your garden, you can check ours out here at News for Jacks.